so let me show you very, very quickly what I had in mind for the third part, which we were not able to do because it took more time than I expected. But if we have uh, an improved version of the hill function that I showed you before, this I have this app. I don't know how you see it. It's a it's a MATLAB app that is in the repository that you can play with. It tells you how here are the values of the parameters, the KD. You can change it, and you can see how that affects to the shape of the of the hill function and eventually to the amount of protein that you will get for a different level of, of transcription factor. Then you can change. So this is the hill coefficient that I was talking. If you, the one that we had before, it gives a shape like this, which is like a Michaelis menten. If you have a cooperativity of two, like the, for example, the PLAX promoter, uh, you need two lax stars to, to make it work. Then the coefficient is two and you will get a curve like this. If you have, if you have the LACI, the PLAC promoter, it's a, the exponent is like a four, then you will have a steepest, steeper curve there. So that's how the coefficient changes the shape. Then the maximal expression, this one is the, the alpha that we had here. So if you increase the copy number or the transcription rate or the translation rate, what you will get is a higher amount of proteins there. And the one that I didn't talk because it's more complicated, but it's, it's useful to, to know it. The, in general, what is, what is this curve telling us now? If we had zero, if we had zero amount of transcription factor, there will be no protein. And that in general is not true in the, in, in the cell. There is still a level of expression, even if we don't have any transcription factor. And that is represented by this beta zero here, which is called the basal expression of the promoter. Maybe you heard that before. It's the amount of expression that you have when you don't have transcription factor. So if we increase that, it's a, it's a percentual value. If we have 0.1, it will be the 10% of the total expression here, for example, 500, here 5,000. It means that even if I don't add activator, I will get a level of expression there, which is low, but it's there. And then if I increase the amount of transcription factor activator, we will have increasing value of the, the amount of protein that we produce. Okay, so all these, uh, and all the MATLAB scripts are in the in the Git that will appear in the in the IGEN web in events or in measurements, and that will be it. Of course, we have remember that we have the the office hours of the measurement committee. We had one this morning, and we have one this afternoon, Europe afternoon, and you can contact us via email of course and we will try to to help you with whatever you need um and i think that will be all for okay there are more expressions more questions sorry anonymous ask why is the reason of multiplying one minus beta zero this one it's a trick to to make this into Look, if I increase this guy, the, the total doesn't get increased. It's, it's a way of telling that this steals from this. I don't know if you, if you, if you follow. To, to be able to parameterize the maximum expression with this guy. Be, what you can do if you, if you multiply A max times beta and A max times this, you will get the different A max. So, if we want to capture the maximal expression here to multiply all this, then you need to write it like this to, to, don't, to don't change the value because of the basal expression. It's, it's a way of writing it. You could write uh, beta zero star, which will be this times this, and then a max times this, 
will be the, the other amount. But to represent exactly this curve, it's, it's better to write it like this, but it's just a way of, of writing. How you determine the level of plasma expression, you put the, you put the plasmid in the cell and uh, you measure without putting any, any inducer. So if, what the, the, the thing that we are saying here, here we're talking about transcription factor in general, what we will be talking when we have an inducible promoter is the amount of inducer, which makes the active form of the transcription factor. For example, in the case of the, the Lux uh, operon from Bibliothe Fischeri, uh, the active transcription factor is Lux R, a dimer with two molecules of AHL, which is the inducer. I don't know if you know the, the system. Uh, so the, the variable that we will put down here is the amount of AHL. In the PTED promoter, for example, the amount that you put here, if you use it like that, will be the concentration of tetracycline you add to the, to the culture. If you use the PBAD, it will be the amount of arabinose because it's what it translates into the active form of the transcription factor, okay? Alexis wanted to say something. Alexis, you want to pitch in? He's just tracking the fact that you're answering the question live. Ah, okay, sorry, I thought, perfect, thank you. Ah, good, good, I didn't get that. Okay, so the heat coefficient is not equal to the number of binding transcription factors at the same time, right? Yes, so it's related to the, to the cooperativity of that transcription factor uh, active form. So in the case of a, of a dimer, it's a two, and in the case of a tetramer is a four, but it also helps to, when you fit to experimental data, we will talk about in the next one, uh, sometimes the value of the, if you, if you leave three, the value of the coefficient and you get it from the data, sometimes you can have a, a number that is not a one to, to help you fit with the, with the nonlinearities of the, of the data, but that's a different story. But yeah, in general, the coefficient is, is equal to the number of cooperatively binding transcription factor to the, to the same site. Okay, we are already 10 minutes off. I think we can say that it's finished for today. Thank you very much to all the attendees and keep looking at the item web for more uh, information. Thank you.